we are. We're going to get the commissioners already. Uh, good morning and welcome to the Cumberland County Board of Commissioners meeting, uh, November the 6th, 2017. Uh, meeting will be led. Ooh, might be a little loud. Yeah. Led in the uh, invocation of the Pledge of Allegiance by Commissioner Lancaster. Please stand. And, and before I give our prayer, may we remember those 26 lives lost tragically in a small Texas community, as well as eight members of one family, and, and God bless each of those. <coughs> Father, you are our strength and inspiration. We ask for your guiding hand to lead us through this meeting. May we approach our task with wisdom, and may we approach our members with respect. May our conduct create an environment of cooperation and kindness among all that are gathered here this morning. We thank you for helping us to accomplish our work this day. In your powerful name we pray. Amen. Amen. The pledge, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And just before we get started, let me, um, I think on behalf of this board, uh, we lost a, uh, one of the uh, people of our community who is a very, very fine man, served the town of Hope Mills <clears throat> uh, tremendously. And uh, so our prayers and our condolences go out to the Gorman family, Commissioner Gorman out in Hope Mills. Uh, he passed uh, just, uh, what, Friday? I think it was Friday or Saturday. Saturday. So we, uh, we send our prayers. Uh, to his family. Uh, with that, uh, I will call on Commissioner uh, Council, recognition of the Environmental Health Department. The Cumberland County Department of Public Health received several awards during the North Carolina Public Health Association's Fall Educational Conference held in Asheville last month. Uh, what is not on this list is that another award should be given to our interim director, Rod Jenkins, for completing a two-year fellowship. And he passed with flying colors in leadership and management of the health department. But this morning, the health department's, oh, come on up, both of you. Where is the picture taker? Oh, here you are, baby. Come on. Come on, I'm going to be in the middle. OK. The health department's environmental health division received the Norton Group Award for outstanding cooperation and service to public health in North Carolina during the past year. Environmental health participates in the Food and Drug Administration's oh, I'm not going to start over. Retail program standards and has worked toward achieving uh, performance with the recommended nine standards through continuous improvements and the development of innovative strategies. Daniel Ortiz, Ortiz, I always want to call you Ortiz, right? Yes, ma'am. Tease. Whatever you want. Okay. <laughs> That's what we say to you. Is the Environmental Health uh, Division Director, and he was awarded the W.A. Bill Broadway Award for consistently improving the practice of environmental health in North Carolina. Under his leadership, the health department has entered into the FDI program standards and has already met two of the nine standards, participated in Zika research, conducted quarterly food safety forums open to the public on various topics, and partnered with Yelp to have restaurant <coughs> inspection scores available through their app in order to increase availability of scores and raise public awareness of food safety. Diana Blue of that department also was the recipient of 
an all-star award for her personal and professional qualities, including her ethics, dedication, and determination. All-star awards are pre presented to public health professionals who epitomize public health. Now, I don't know everything that Daniel does, but I know at every health board meeting he is reporting on something. And during the uh, Hurricane Matthew last year, he was a model. He worked seven days a week, 24 hours a day, it seemed, to help all of the residents of uh, Cumberland County who were affected by floodwaters. Rod, I'm so glad that you kept him. You didn't fire him anything. Oh, no. Oh, no. He's great. He is a, is a great employee, a great addition, and congratulations on your achievement Thanks. also. So would you both please? Oh, you have a comment, please? Oh, yeah, well, we have a great team in environmental health and with the health department, and I'm, I'm proud of all my staff. They're, they're wonderful. I couldn't do it without them. We're proud of you, too. Would you please uh, go around and start with my hand, because I can't move that fast. Oh, wait a minute. I've got all of this that I didn't do. Take another picture, baby. This one is to Daniel. Turn and that's around. not me. That's me, Broadway. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Yes, I mentioned it. She's not here. Thank you. We can get an approval of the agenda. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Madam Manager, I think we have a presentation from the uh, 2016 Cumberland County Schools uh, Sustainability Report by uh, Superintendent Tim Kinlaw. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. This is probably the first time that anybody from the, from the school system has come to present without asking for money. <laughs> <laughs> at, least, at least since job. I've been here. Good job, Tim. But I, what I want to talk morning. to you about just a few minutes today is, is tell you what we're doing to try and save money. Uh, a few of us were in this room will remember, and a very few, that, that, that up until 1991, the state paid the utility bills for school systems in North Carolina. And in 1991, they stopped funding that, and the full burden of utilities fell on the shoulders of the county commissioners. You know, this year, our total utilities will be around $9 million. And so approximately 13 to 15 percent of every dollar we receive from the county goes to pay for utilities. Certainly we understand it's, 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 it's just not enough to just ask for money to pay for the utility bill. Uh, we want to demonstrate that, that we're doing everything we can do to conserve our utilities, to save taxpayers dollars that we can put to other uses uh, for educating the children. Uh, we are in cooperation with the Greater Sand Hills uh, we are, they have a representative embedded with us that worked with us every day. Uh, their role is they go out in the schools, they promote utility education as far as conservation. They do energy audits. They do energy audits at night when the schools are closed to go around and check and see are we turning off computers, are we turning off lights, what are our thermostats. So they're a great resource for us. But I wanted to explain and really go over briefly on, and it's listed on page seven, the five pillars of our uh, sustainability. Awareness and education. We've incorporated energy conservation into the curriculum at all grade levels, 
in our science program. The kids call this the fun stuff because they get to go out uh, to school, uh, they do safety patrols in the school, uh, they make visits to PwC, to stormwater management offices, they, they go around and, and really try to understand uh, the impact of, of wasteful use of utilities. Uh, we also make our staff aware. Uh, we actually have a student council that is on the, we call it the green team, where they look at our usage, they, look, they go out and compare schools, and compare schools and say at school A, Terry Sanford, they're doing this, well at school B, at uh, E. Smith, they're saving twice as much. So they get, they get in competitions to, to save. Uh, pollution control. We look at everything we do as far as everything from our aisling policy where we turn our buses off when they're, when they're waiting for students to come out. Uh, looking at our energy clocks and timers uh, where we only cut the, the, the air conditioning on or heating on. Sometimes we, we get a little bit too tight with this before school starts and when school's over. Uh, our waste reduction, we really work and, and the Cumberland County Solid Waste Department works so great with us in our energy, excuse me, in our recycling efforts. Uh, when we buy materials now, our, we try to look at using recyclable paper, kitchen products, everything we can do to save and, and, and conserve. Of course, water conservation, we've had a program where we've been, we've been going through over the last eight years and changing out our faucets, changing out our uh, all of our urinals, our, our commodes, to energy efficient models. Uh, and everything we do when we do renovations uh, and when we um, build new schools. And give you an example, uh, we built John Griffin in 1995. And we built uh, Grace Creek Middle in 2008. And though they're the same plan, that's a prototype plan. Uh, Grace Creek Middle actually uses 25% less utilities, same size building as John Griffin, because we, we constantly go back and look at new systems. It has an ICE system where the John Griffin School has a conventional uh, air cooling system. So we do everything we can do when, we're, when we are remodeling with our lighting fixtures, our utilities, uh, with our HVAC systems to make sure we're using the most efficient systems we can buy. Uh, and by doing that, we look at our payback. It may cost a little bit more, but if we can save money over two or three years, it, it pays for itself. Um, and this really falls again on ener energy conservation. And, and our one big thing that's very successful, our schools, we monitor their usage. And we look at their past usage. And they get a percentage back into their budget. Uh, they get 20% in some cases 25 percent based on their energy <coughs> conservation efforts. For example, if a school saved five thousand dollars this year, when we look at their energy conservation efforts, they'll get twelve hundred fifty dollars of that back to the school and they can use it to buy lawn equipment, school supplies, however they want to spend it. But instead, instead of paying PwC and Duke Power, we pay back to our sales in our programs. To sum up real quickly, uh, and this is the best example I know, we've looked at our, our energy usage since 2010 has declined about 15% per square foot over the last six years or seven years. Uh, in 2010, we were using an average of, we used 7.5 million kilowatt hours of electricity. This past year, we used 6.2. To make it real simple, if you had a car getting 75 miles to the gallon, now our car gets 62 miles to the gallon. Uh, and the results of that, uh, and probably the meat of, the, of, the, of what's in this little report is on page 34. Since 2011, we've saved approximately about $3.7 million that if we had continued using the kilowatts at the same rate we were using, that's how much additional money we would have spent for utilities. Uh, at the same time that our kilowatt usage has gone up, excuse me, gone down. Over the last six years, we've seen our utility rates go up about 10%. So again, if we were still using utilities at that rate, uh, we would spend about 800,000 more dollars this year. But 
Savings are cumulative. So again, $3.7 million, that will, that will repair schools, that will hire teachers. And that is local money that we're saving. Uh, but I just want to assure you that we will continue to do everything we can do to make sure we're, we're using our resources efficiently. Uh, and at the same time, hopefully that uh, as we look at other areas, we can say we'll continuously do so. There's not any questions. I'm, I'm Mr. Kenlaw, let me uh, just take this opportunity to applaud uh, the school system. I think uh, it's a model for the state to look at. Uh, I don't think there's many people that's embedding sustainable, uh, sustainable sand hills into their uh, program. So I want to applaud you and the school system <clears throat> for being able to be to do that and be stewards of the county's money. I got uh, Commissioner Keith. Uh, real quick, uh, thank you for the report, um, Superintendent. I know with your background, you're very, you understand the facilities and the costs that go into those very much. Um, do, are we getting a special rate from PwC or is it pretty much the standard rate? We get, we do get a, a great rate from PwC. Uh, okay. they, they, they have different, they have so many different rate plans. Uh, but we have, for, for businesses, I think we probably uh, are close to what the Goodyear plan is paying for utilities so they they've they've been very cooperative in, in in helping us and at the same time they fund grants for us too to do like lighting upgrades right um, that's so where i was going there's a number they have a, a program in place yes. where um if you're change, willing to change out uh, you right know, and we do that we, we get the maximum amount uh every year from pwc uh duke power also has a plan that we use south river electric right uh, they're Lumbia electric. Too. They are, they're, they're good about robust. doing that yeah so. Um, you mentioned the, the parallel between a school that's 20 years old and a school that's roughly 10 mm -hmm. years old in the savings. Um, we have a number of schools in our system that are well over 50 or 60 years old. And although I know you've been making upgrades for them all the way, is, is the, uh, the energy cost um, much higher in those schools than it is? In you know, the, it, it's really not because of the upgrades we've made in those schools. We go with... Uh, with Better insulated windows, for example, when we replace our roofs, we're we're actually putting on systems that are four times have four times as much insulation as what they had 30 years ago. We replace doors, we go through, and uh, uh, as we replace systems, we can replace an air conditioner that is 35 percent more efficient than the air conditioner we're replacing. And yeah, you know, surprisingly, the old schools are ver are are comparative to our new schools now and the reason for this is unfortunately some of our old schools not all of our gyms are air-conditioned our hallways are not air-conditioned our bathrooms are not air-conditioned so there's a lot of spaces in schools that we don't use the utilities because they would they were not built with that we've not been able to afford to to make all the upgrades yet but uh and looking at you know we have 11 schools that were built in the 20s and the 30s and again, we've upgraded those. Now we've got a world of schools that were built. Our most inefficient schools were actually built in the 50s and the 60s, when utilities were, mm -hmm. you know, utilities were two cents a kilowatt hour, yep. and they were full of glass for natural lighting, of course. Mm -hmm. But they built them. That was the boom time. So they built yep. schools as cheap as they could because that's the only way you you could do it. So we upgrade the windows and those and the doors and the systems. So uh, we do look at that, uh, and. Where a lot of systems have messed up in the last few years is they look at energy efficiency only when they build. They don't look at the maintenance and cost of maintaining those energy systems that to run just like a car. It's got to be very, it's got to run just right to save those utilities. And a lot of systems are finding that they've gone with the very best, the Cadillac, but the maintenance cost and the caliber of labor or staff you must have to maintain those offset the energy right. savings. So you yeah. have to be very careful with that. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Uh, just a question. Mr. Kellogg, how about... Pull your mic down just a little bit. Your microphone. Yes, I'm sorry. Um, with, I, I know that we have some schools that have solar, the panels. How about a little update on, on those? And, and uh, you know, at one time, the schools were talking about selling off some of the excess energy and we never you're you're mistaken sir <laughs> okay any updates on that we we did we did build stony uh, excuse me new century elementary and it was designed for solar panels now we put in a solar loop system in other words the water is runs through the ground it's heated and it's cool based on the year 
But when we, and that's kind of what I was talking about, Mr. Keith. When we looked at that time, what the solar panels would cost and look at the energy savings, um, it was all like a, it was like a 38 year payback. And for example, Hope County actually took the, our, our, our new Century Elementary design and designed their school, but where we only, we qualified for 30% grants, they qualified for 70% grants. So they were able to do it in Hope County based on the grants they actually received and tax credits. Um, but as we looked at solar, as we continue to look at solar, we can save more money by investing in LED lighting and upgrading our existing systems than we can going solar. For example, I can change out a light fixture uh, and, and pay for it in three years in savings. That is much a better resource of our funds than going solar. Uh, now solar costs since we built New Century, excuse me, New Century Elementary, solar costs have come down about 45% over the last eight years. So we still look at that, but again, it's, it's not where it needs to be yet based on the funds we have where we can still save more money using uh, switching our existing systems. And, and one final comment, since we're talking about going green and sustainable this and that, and, and here again, and, uh, the school system to be complimented for, for what you do for our environment. About a quick update on the water quality and what you have found out uh, in terms of state testing for our schools in that area. Uh, you know, Ottoman Road, there was no trace found. At, at Grace Creek Elementary, they found it was 5.6 parts per trillion, where the threshold for concern is 140 parts per million. Um, and that's, that's all we know right now. But because that Ottoman Road is such close proximity to Grace Creek Elementary, we've made the decision, even though we don't have to, to continue using bottled or butt water at those two schools. Uh, we just feel like that it's the best thing to do right now to put everybody's mind at ease until the state comes back with additional testing. Uh, it's like I had a concerned parent call me and I, I talked to them about what we were doing and, and they said, well, I think you need to do more. And I said, well, sir, where's your water come from? Well, it comes out of the ground. I said, that's where ours, ours comes out of, the same ground that you're, you're concerned about. But again, we want to put everybody's mind at ease. We, our long range plan, we've looked at, we've been looking at getting water down there for, uh, gosh, 10 years. Uh, and as little as five years ago, the cost we estimated would cost about $3.8 million. Well, because of water extensions that have taken place over the last few years, that cost to us now, we think it's around about one point two million dollars so that cost has greatly come down uh, and as far as our plan of course we're meeting with PwC and the, and the county's cooperative as far as meeting also uh, because this this problem is, is going to grow before it recent get declines but uh, we'll do everything we can we have to do to make sure the water at those two schools is safe thank you and I'll bring uh, thank you uh, mr. superintendent I will bring to uh, the board's attention and I think uh, Mr. Kenlaw just, uh, Superintendent Kenlaw just alluded to it that we're putting together a meeting with DEQ, PwC, uh, the school system, the health department uh, to make sure that we're all on the same page and we upgrade it. We understand uh, as to that issue, we do not want to get ahead of the state on that issue. We want to let our citizens know that this board though is involved in it, is looking after our citizens to make sure that uh, everything is going well even to the school system. So thank you so very much. Thank you. Uh, thank you all so Kimmel. much. That takes us to uh, the consent agenda. Does anybody need anything to pull from the consent agenda? If not, I will accept the motion. Move so to approve the consent second. Agenda. Been moved by uh, Commissioner Council and seconded by Commissioner Faircloth, in case you missed that, Madam Clerk. All those in favor? Unanimous. Uh, that takes us to a public hearing. 
Uh, Madam Manager. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Item number four is a public hearing and also approval of a resolution for the issuance of tax exempt bonds not to exceed $152 million by the Public Finance Authority to refinance certain cost of projects on behalf of the Cumberland County Hospital System doing business as Cape Fear Valley Health System. And if I could, I'd like to give you a little bit of background um, regarding this item. <clears throat> Let me pull the attachment up. I apologize. <clears throat> it's Novus. We're good. Just hit the button right there. I was there, there and it knocked me <laughs> off. I apologize. So uh, as just a little bit of background. The hospital system is looking to refinance some outstanding existing bonds that were originally issued in 2008. And to accomplish the financing, the corporation is asking the public finance authority to issue these tax exempt refunding bonds that are to be purchased by BB&T. Because the corporation is a 501c3 organization, federal income tax laws require a public hearing on behalf of the corporation in the governmental um, unit um, where the facilities are located. There's a resolution that's been included in your package that approves the issuance of these refunding bonds by the Public Finance Authority. The resolution states, in no event shall the county or the state be liable for the bonds, and this does not constitute a debt of the county or the state of North Carolina. This, this morning we have Ms. Sandra Williams, who's the Chief Finance um, Officer for the um, hospital system, and we also have a member of Bond Council, Mr. Brandon Lofton here, that's available to ask, um, answer any questions. So Mr. Uh, Chairman, we need to hold the public hearing, and then the board will need to consider the resolution. Okay. Anyone have any questions after that uh, summary? Uh, Commissioner Evans. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I was reading here um, regarding public hearings, and it says to give the finance authority and, and refinance certain costs of various projects on behalf of the Cumberland County Hospital System. What are some of those costs for what projects? <clears throat> These are projects that have already been put in place. Um, I would, um, if if the board's okay, ask Ms. Williams to come forward and answer that question, please. Or any, I mean. Or, or the bond council, or Mr. Lofton. Any of them, yes. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, again, my name is Brandon Lofton, Robinson Bradshaw. We're serving as bond council on behalf of the hospital system. Um, as was noted, uh, this is a refinancing of the 2008 A bonds. The 2008 A bonds were used to acquire um, the health system, various projects for the health system, which are all outlined in the notice of public hearing, um, where we list out in pretty good detail uh, each, each part of the project. Um, I think it will probably be too exhaustive for me to go through and read all of them here. Um, but you see it, it is listed in Well, the, the reason that I asked was so that the people that are listening on television yes. at home would understand which projects, some of the projects, not all of them, but some of the projects that we're talking about supporting as far as this is concerned. Right. So if you would pleasure me by just giving a couple of, uh, that's probably the wrong word, but um, if you would just give a couple of examples of what it is that we're talking about. 